How you doing? I have some great news for you. I played in a men's league uh, playoffs this weekend. Soccer. You know, I, I try and stay active. I'm a goalkeeper. And it, the, the semifinal of the playoffs, it went to a penalty shootout. Your boy delivered not one, not two, but three saves in the penalty shootout. That's right. And I was Emmy Martinez in it. I was talking trash. I was laying down the law. I wasn't going to do it until the other goalkeeper. Basically, you kind of alternate back and forth, obviously. Uh, the other goalkeeper, he was going first. So we were shooting first. And he steps in, in into the goal and he goes, well, you're not going to shoot in that? And he starts talking to him. Right? And he, it's, it's not men's league. It's like a co-ed, uh, you know, rec league, basically. And... <laughs> That you have to alternate boy, girl, boy, girl. So the second person going is a girl. And he does the whole Amy Martinez thing. And he grabs the ball and he walks over and hands it to her. And it's like, I'm going to save this or whatever. What You know, just keeps talking and talking and talking. So I'm like, I'm not standing for this. So I turned on my toxicity. I turned it up to 11. I turned my toxicity all the way up. I saved one of the penalties because this guy, he was he actually wasn't very good. He had the ball hit him three times, and the, the ball still went in, which is impressive, actually. That's hard to do in a penalty shootout. But I saved one of them, and I turned over to the to their goalkeeper, and I went, so that's how you're supposed to do that. Um, and I made sure. I learned from Emmy Martinez. I was trying to, like, remember what he did every single time, whether it was a ball that I saved or a ball that he didn't save. The, I would go and grab the ball so I could either hand it to my person or – hand it to the other person. Although I didn't want to be mean to the shooters. I wasn't mean to the shooters. I would just kind of walk up and hand them the ball and be nice to them. But I feel like just the act of walking up and handing them the ball is intimidating. Anyways, I found a, an eaten, a, you know, an already consumed ring pop on the ground. So just like the plastic ring pop. And when we scored the winning goal, I got on one knee and proposed to the other goalkeeper. And so I just really needed to tell you guys that story because, you know, every once in a while in your life, you just have one of those peak athletic moments that was a peak athletic moment. I was feeling it. I saved three out of the four that I faced. And the fourth one, I got my hands all over it. And I should have saved it. And I'm frustrated that I didn't because I would have been perfect. And this story would have been even better. But I have another great story for you today. I, not just my own incredible heroics in a rec league, but a team from Romania that's captured my heart. And I hope it will capture yours. Because we're talking about a team that cannot, actually can't, be promoted to the top Romanian league, but is going to be playing in Europe next season. At least the signs indicate that they will be playing in Europe next season. Even though they're in the second division and two years ago, they were in the third division of Romania. Now there are, and I mean this, zero articles about this in English. So I may just be the only English source of information on this entire topic, but I find it fabulous. Somebody posted this in the what's happening section of uh of the discord that we have and that was my first clue because there was one reddit discussion about it and so i have gone diving and google translating romanian articles to try and unpack this situation so basically the club which is called Cornival, we'll, we'll call them Cornival, but the actual full club name is Cornival honey duara uh, and they were playing in the romanian cup basically uh, you know, you have the FA Cup in England. This is a Romanian Cup, right? And it's got a European place attached to it. And they won. So Cornival Hanidoara defeats Uchilul Galaxi 3-2 on penalties to lift their first ever major trophy. So an amazing achievement for Cornival Hanidoara, right? In a second division team winning a cup and playing in Europe from the second division is not a surprise. What is, well, I mean, it is a surprise. That's a huge upset and always a cool story that, let's be honest, I'd probably be making a video about anyways. But what makes this so much more insane is that this club will be in Europe as long as it can get its license, which we're going to talk about, uh, it, but it can't play in the first division. So that sets off my spidey senses. I'm immediately looking for people that speak Romanian in this comment section to kind of explain why right, that they can't play in Europe. Because even all the articles that I am able to translate are talking more about how they're going to be able to get into Europe because that's a whole different process that the, this team has to go through. But as far as I can understand from people in the r slash soccer Reddit that are identified as Romanian multiple times, so, you know, I'm not just going off one comment here, but this is the best one that describes it. They're unable to be promoted 
due to the Romanian Federation's poor licensing rules. That's obviously personal judgment. I, I will, I'm going to add a caveat to why they think they're poor. Uh, exactly the same scenario happened to Stau in previous seasons. So they are the second club to not be promoted because of these rules. A publicly owned team from the second division can play in the Europa League and other competitions, but can't promote to the first division. So if it is a publicly owned club, then you cannot play in the Romanian first division. Now, I believe, right, the way that, it, the, the way that somebody else has come in to explain it is they made this law a fish specifically so teams would be forced to be privatized and bought for virtually nothing by mobsters in the early 2000s. Obviously, that didn't go super well for a lot of Eastern European clubs, but I think there might be another underlying reason for this. If you understand how things worked behind, behind the Iron Curtain, which Romania was behind the Iron Curtain, the clubs were owned by state entities, right? You had the railway workers, right? You, locomotive, right? You, you, that's why you have so many different locomotives and different, right? You, you had the police, you had, you know, th this town's government, you had versus this town's government, right? That's who was running the clubs. And so I can actually understand if you're coming out of a world that exists like that, because I did that whole in-depth video about football in Ukraine, which was one of my favorite videos we've ever done. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Uh, it goes all the way up through the modern day, so we are talking about the war and stuff and how, but how it's affected the, the football league and how it's kind of sustained. But in the history part of that, the huge concern when the USSR basically fell, and it's, it, uh, Romania wasn't part of that, but like its blanket over that part of the world fell, that you had to transition these leagues, with, which were technically amateur, even though they weren't, uh, which were state-owned, now, now into this kind of free market system, right? That the, the clubs everywhere else operated under. And something that could aid that transition is a rule forcing state entities to give up the clubs. Like I at least understand where that's coming from. Now, I also understand that, that a rule like that that could make sense to one person is also a huge opportunity for one of these barons with a ton of money to just come in and buy a club and when they're done, you know, when they want to go play with a different toy, the club just ends up completely ruined. Like, I understand that that is the alternate side of this. And now, in, a, you know, three freaking over 30 years after the USSR has collapsed, you probably don't need a rule like that anymore because one of the healthiest things you can do now is have a club that is owned by some sort of you know, in, in entity, right? Like what we're talking about here is the fact that Cornival is owned by the town that it is in, right? Which is a little weird. It's a little different. We're not quite talking about what Germany has where the club is owned by the fans, 50 plus one share, right? We're talking about like the town owns the club, but it also feels like a much safer financial option right, is somebody that only has a beginner, like a fan's understanding of how this works, right? It sounds like a much safer financial option. Wait, is there a Reddit called I Simp for Zealand? Did I just see that pop up on the side? Oh, this was a Reddit that it, so we created an official Reddit. I remember what this is. Sorry, I got distracted. We created an official Reddit. So this is the Reddit that existed around what around the channels before we created like an official Reddit that we could um interact with. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just like that the the R slash the old Zealand is like the official Reddit for, for everything that we do, but R slash I simp for Zealand is a funny name for the first one. Okay, what was I talking about? But state-owned clubs or cl clubs owned by an entity of the state can't get a license to play in the first division, which brings me to my dive into all of these conversations. Can they get a license to play in Europe? Because a team like Cornival, after this amazing win in the Romanian Cup, has to get a license to play in Europe. And they'll actually, even though they're not going to be in the first division, going to be the second highest European team in the in out, out of Romania. Well, they only get one Champions League spot and the Europa League spot goes to the winner of the Romanian Cup and that is Cornival. So the, and then two teams in the Conference League, that's it. So they, Cornival at least, uh, according to Anton Heleshtinau, who is the sports director, are 100% are sure, 100% we will get the license. It's a matter of days, not hours though. So it's going to take a few days for them to get it. But they need to get it quickly because June 18th, I believe, is the draw date for like the preliminary rounds, uh, which is what they're obviously going to be involved in. Uh, but they, they are already working on this process.
So the sports director is insistent that all of the application forms and everything have been submitted via email and phone call, whatever. They've sorted out the stadium. They're going to play at Sepsi's uh, Arena. They're, they're, apparently, they're building a new stadium. They're having to leave their old one. So a lot of things are just wild and up in the air for them right now when it comes to being able to play in Europe. But there is kind of this brewing discontent among the other Romanian teams because, of course, how well Cornival does in Europe is going to affect Romania's coefficient, which will not affect Cornival, right? Because they are not in the top division. The only way they can qualify for this stuff is by winning the cup in the first place, where the coefficient affects how many teams get into European play. So there is one uh, one of the presidents of the other teams on record. Uh, Nelutu Varga, uh, I believe is the name, the boss for CFR Cluj, which is one of the big clubs in Romania. Uh, he said that you know maybe if they didn't get the permission to go play in the Europa League, that that might be a good thing. You know, somebody else would be able to go in their stead and life might be better and that sort of stuff. He said it would be nice. That's what he said. It would be nice for the team from Hanadura to give up its participating uh, spot in the European Cups uh, and be happy for you know somebody else to kind of step in. I'm assuming his club. I have no idea. But you know what? The simple solution, if you want to be able to control... Like how, like what affects your coefficient? Just win. How about you don't lose to a team in the second division, which according to like this comment right here, a team that was in the third division and then managed to get to the second division, didn't really change the squad and managed to get into a promotion spot in the second division, only not to get promoted. So this club is actually quite good. And I do have some good news for you. Apparently, according to that same source, now this one I haven't necessarily been able to back up, although I heard kind of similar things that, Something like, oh, in the near future, they might be able to get promoted. I figured that was referring to some sort of change to the licensing rules. But this person says that it is because they are circumventing the licensing rules at Carnival. Apparently, Carnival will be eligible for promotion. They will still be funded by their municipality, but indirectly through a, a private company owned by the municipality. Like, this is, a, this is the most basic thing ever. The municipality is going to create a company. It, it, it then puts the money in the company, and that company owns the club, and that allows them to get licensing for the first division. So next year, Carnival will not only be able to get promoted, they will be playing likely in the Europa League at the same time. That is not a sentence that normally happens, but things are getting weird. You know, like Niran, FNG, always has a Romania this week. Well, this is what's going on in Romania this week. Just in case he doesn't do that segment on football this week, I got you covered. Because Romania, I'm seeing the vision. It's weird. <laughs> it's getting weird.